Hey guys, Brian here with What's Prey Outdoors. Hope you guys are doing well. Today in the video, we are heading out to CNC Indoor Range, meeting up with Leslie, the owner. And Leslie, thank you so much for having us out. We had a blast, man. What we're doing is testing the Max Body Armor pistol plate. This is what the plate looks like when you start. This is what it looks like when we got done. We put a wallop on this plate, to say the least. We tested it to the limits, which uh, by certification standards is a 44 mag and 12 gauge slug. We tested a lot of different ammo leading up to that. And once we got to that, we pushed it to its breaking point. But you guys have to watch the video to see how that happens. And uh, also watch to find out about this slug. Still blows my mind. See you in a few minutes. 38 Special, the first one uh, on this plate carrier. Uh, 38 Special, this is the Steinel. 125 grain snub nose pro, uh, moving at 890 feet per second. This is a solid copper expanding projectile. Here we go. You can see the projectile. Yeah. Right there. There is no question. No need to even open him up. Yeah. You can see and feel that projectile there. Yeah. Just out of curiosity, I can't feel any, any lumps or anything nothing. on the back of that yeah. back here. All right, good test one. All right. All right, guys, CNC Ammo's 106 grain, 9 millimeter SXP, moving at 1,200 feet per second. And let's see how Mario takes this. Man, I love that 1911 9 mil. That is just nice. Let's see how it did. That's where you are, and I can feel the projectile in there again. Yeah, you can see it in there. I can't feel any humps or anything in the back. All right. Definitely doing its job. Yeah. All Good right, up. next up, 357. 357. All right, guys, next up, Underwood Ammo, 357, the Extreme Penetrator, moving at 1,550 feet a second. This is a 140 grain solid copper projectile. That little gun's got some authority. It's got some pop to it for sure. A little bit lower. Yep. Still feel that projectile right there. I, I don't feel any noticeable humps at all. That's awesome. Here. So far, so good. Steel's really doing his job. Yep. Probably doesn't feel good with Mario there. Mario's not having a good day. Okay, guys, Steinel Ammunition, Extreme Penetrator, 185 grain, 10 millimeter round, moving at 1,045 feet per second. Let's see how this does. I can see the projectile. <laughs> yeah, you can see that from here. <laughs> Let's go check it out. That is a chunk of copper. There's that guy there. Still don't feel a, a, a budge in that plate. It's doing really well. It's my choice so far. All right, guys, up next is the 45 ACP. Uh, this is Steinle ammo at a 100, 185 grain projectile, solid copper hollow point at 990 feet per second. Actually, There's that hole. It, it skeeted a little sideways on that one. You still feel the projectile is not. Um, yeah. Let's just pull that vest, I'm gonna play yeah. out for a second and just see if we do have any. Pop these side clips. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> Too funny. I forgot this has that uh, coating on there that actually helps keep that bullet yeah. um, within that carrier. It's got some heavy duty anti spalling on it. Man, I wanna keep it just like that and not shoot it anymore. That's pretty cool. It's a wall hanger. Look at that guy. You can look at that <laughs> so flipping it over. You can see actually some dimples within that plate. But yeah. Very minimal. But that coating, man, that is awesome. That is really cool. Five rounds? Even after dropping it on the ground, they stayed in there. What's that? Even after dropping it on the ground, they stayed <laughs> right. in there. <laughs> you can't hardly pull them out. All right, guys. Fioki Defense Dynamics, 240 grain, flat nose, moving at 1,310 feet per second. And one of these days, Leslie's 44 mag will become mine. I can dream about it, can't I? Whoo! I love this gun. There's no real kick to it. It's a nice soft shooter. Shoot back up here, right? Yep. 
So I feel a bullet just on We'll say there's definitely going to be some deformation there. Wait, let's shoot it with the 12 gauge and then check it. Okay. Yeah. Um, Brian, do you think that that's a, what bullet was that you were just shooting? Uh, was that a lead based bullet? Yeah. That, okay. Yeah. Do you think we have to pop the solid copper just because yeah. there is, uh, there's no deform, or not as much deformation in a solid copper? Yeah. Uh, maybe we could just pop it yeah. down this corner just to see if there's a difference between the same caliber because that's the limit of this vest. Definitely. 44 Magnum, 225 grain solid copper hollow point. Uh, this is called our SXP round. Moving at about uh, 1300 feet a second, 1250, 1300 feet a second. Whoo! I heard it. Yeah. That's why we angled it. <laughs> yeah. I hit it, I hit it in that bottom left quadrant and I heard it hit something. So guys, if you've noticed, Mario's kind of angled. Leslie did that for a reason. We are shooting steel indoors. He angled it so it would skeet off and we just heard part of the round hit the wall. So good job on Leslie. Yeah, you can see where it went in right here and came out the side. Mario's arm almost got clipped. He's a fortunate guy. <laughs> How did it not get clipped? <laughs> it just it shot right out, out the side. That's very cool. Yeah. No patch rule on that, so yeah. kudos to that vest. Down. Next up's the 12 gauge. Okay guys, Mario's fixing to take a bit of a trip. Federal true ball rifled slug, moving at 1600 feet per second, one ounce, which is equivalent to about 437 grains, right Leslie? Yes sir. So, this is gonna be fun. Woo! Nice hard low hit, really testing the uh, capability of that spall anti-spalling. We've got a bit of smoke coming out of there. <clears throat> Let's pop these clips and check this plate out. Feel it, but there's no pass through. Yeah, and remember the plate will drop when we open it this time. <laughs> Got it? Yeah. Oh. Holy smokes! Shotgun slug here. I uh, just kind of deflected down in the piece of the projectile here. And some of your back. SXP round is captured in there. Is it? Or is that? Just yeah, that's transfer. Just, uh, yeah, just a uh, copper transfer. Yeah. I think it actually all come out right there. Yeah. That is pretty impressive. Some serious deformation from that 12 gauge. But, but uh, you know what? He lives to see another day. Yes, he does. And I just love all this captured ammo on here. It's really holding up. I'm very impressed with this. I'm kind of confused about what this dimple is from here. It's actually dimpling this way. I wonder if you're round here Maybe through some through some have, uh, yeah. some edges out. Yeah, very well. Well, guys, this uh, this plate has currently passed the test, so now we need to make it fail. We're going to hit it with some big stuff now. All right, guys. Next up, 4570 in the revolver, 325 grain Steinel solid brass projectile moving at 1740 feet a second. Let's see what happens. I think it's going to be a heck of a dent in the back of that plate. I think it's going to hold it. Oh yeah. I think it's going to hold it. It might be uh, stuck straight in there. Yeah. So before we drop the plate, we're just going to flip it to show you nothing came through. Yeah, there's nothing through on that plate. I can hear the bullet. And there it is. So there is our solid brass projectile, heavily deformed. and. Obviously, it went in right there, and oh, look at that! Different. We actually cracked the coating. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. But that's a uh, that's a bit above the pay grade of this plate. Absolutely, but you know what? It stopped it. It stopped it. That's right. And that's a nasty guys. This is a nasty bullet. Solid copper. This thing's hot. solid brass. I'm sorry. This wasn't solid brass, and it's super hot right now. Um, and it's with withstanding that. That's abuse. All right, guys, Underwood ammo, 350 grain extreme penetrator, moving at 1,850 feet per second. My wrist is not going to like this, and I know Mario is not going to like it. Okay. Woo! Man, 
and you can feel that thing kick. What do you think, Ryan? Think it? Oh, I see a little bit of smoke coming out of there. <laughs> I'm going to flip it first. Yeah. Holy smokes. It did penetrate. Yeah. He's got a little bit of a boo-boo. Yeah. But he would live to fight another day, yeah. maybe. Yeah. I think he's, the... Uh, he's picking himself off the ground. The trauma from that's going to put you down for a while. Oh. Is it stuck in the, stuck back? In the back? Holy, Holy smokes. <laughs> yeah, that's certainly probably not going to feel good in the chest, Gabby. <laughs> oh, your chest is going to be jello after that. But you know how many people are toting around a 500 Smith & Wesson? Just cowboys <laughs> and crazy people. Man, that is wicked. So we did defeat it somewhat. Right. But you know what? The potential of, uh, of living is, is pretty high. Yeah. yeah. And look at how many rounds we put in the center of that plate. Right. And it held up. I'm impressed. I'm very impressed. I can't wait to try out the rifle plate we've got. Awesome. Max body armor, definitely thumbs up on that. That is insane. There's no cutting them out of that. No, no, we're, we're done testing that. Super, <laughs> yeah. super impressed. Yeah, that's awesome. All right, guys, 44 Magnum. We want to try out a rifle, uh, a little bit longer barrel length. This one is a Ruger M77 44. It does have an integral suppressor. So it's not actually a 16 inch barrel. I think it's 10, 10 and a half inches. The rest of it's baffling. Okay, this um, produced by Suppressed Weapon Systems out of Stafford, Texas. Um, this is the first one. I've got another one coming. Very impressed with what they do with this rifle. Shooting the uh, Fioki Defense Dynamics, 240 grain. It's a soft point, uh, flat nose, moving at 1,310 feet a second. That's awesome. No pass through. No penetration. I can definitely hear the lead. Most of what we've been shooting is copper, solid bullets, copper or brass, yeah. but I do, I do hear lead particles. Um, I think that was going to be it. Yeah. Yeah, we've got an added deformation right here. It actually changed where that um, 500, 500 was, was coming through. So I think it actually hit in, yeah. maybe right in behind it or something. That's pretty intense. Yeah, there's some lead. Yeah. <laughs> this plate just took a beating. Yeah, that got some lead right there that came out. Yeah, but it just, <clears throat> I think it's the added benefit of this, this armor covering is it, once it penetrates that, it kind of just runs under it. Yeah, um, yeah anti-spalling so you don't eat that lead in your face when it comes off of there. Right. And actually we caught two little bits, one there and one there. Yeah. Impressive. That's pretty cool. Max body armor, definitely some good stuff. And that's just a little thin pistol plate. Right, I mean, it just shows you how thin that is. Yeah. So this solid chunk of brass I'm holding here is the 4570 round, the extreme penetrator round. And guys, that is no slouch. That is one heck of a round. This plate chewed it up and spit it back at us, which I really was not expecting. I was expecting a failure on the plate, especially after all the other rounds we hit it with. Uh, obviously it caused a dent in the back of the plate, but it did not break it. However, what did break it was the 500 grain round the uh, 500 Smith & Wesson did that did break the plate and for a better look there is the break in the plate as you can see that plate is broken but it did actually capture the round which is hanging loose in there uh, i'm still really impressed that this plate held up as well as it did i mean that is a very very thin plate yes the plate is curved yes you would be having a very bad day if these rounds hit you especially that quantity of rounds, but what blew my mind the most was the coating. I mean, we did have one small exit here. These obviously broke through on the edges, but the coating retained all the projectiles except for that small amount of that 44 that hit near the edge and it blew out. But even these that hit near the edge, 
it stayed in there. The coating these guys are doing is amazing. It's holding up extremely well. This is actually a rifle plate. It's exactly what the pistol plate looked like before we shot it. And next up, we're gonna be testing the rifle plate. We're obviously doing that outdoors because we're using some very high speed projectiles. We don't wanna risk that bouncing around inside a room. So we'll be doing that testing soon. And uh, I am very excited to see how well that plate holds up and especially the coating with the speed of some of these rounds we're going to be throwing at it. We've got some good rounds lined up to pummel it with after we reach the breaking point or after we reach the, the certified standards and see what it takes to actually break or penetrate the plate. So I'm really excited to see how that goes. If you guys like what you see, give us a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, check us out on Instagram and Facebook. Have a good one guys.